Hello my beautiful people, welcome to another segment with me Raphael from Radiant Reality. It's an absolute pleasure to have you, thank you so much for being here, thank you so much for joining me. So as the name might suggest, this video is all about the air triplicity. So um, I'm doing these as, because I want to do some of the framework and some of the, you know, some of the, the knowledge that's not necessarily commonly known. I will eventually start posting um, uh, weekly transit videos and stuff, but for, for the most part, I wanted to focus on the fundamentals. One, so that I can cement my own knowledge, and two, so that I can kind of spread some of the stuff that I think might be relevant for people to know as well. So, we've got the air triplicity. Why did I start with air? I started with air because as many of you know, I am an Aquarius sun sign. Uh, so, what I wanna talk about is uh, the triplicities belong to an element, right? They belong to an element group. And the triplicity of air starts with, um, or starts with, or rather contains, uh, Libra, Aquarius, and Gemini. Now, in a triplicity, you will have all three types or qualities of sign. So you will have the cardinal signs, uh, which the cardinal air sign is Libra. Uh, a cardinal sign is something or a sign that would start a season. So um, Libra is the start of autumn, right? And uh, it takes us all the way through into winter. Now with the cardinal signs, I don't know why, but the feeling that I get from it is the cardinal signs represent the mind in the human framework. So as you see a human being, we always split it into three, right? Mind, body, and soul. And that's what I've put here as a list. Um, so the cardinal air sign is Libra, which is all to do with the mind, you know? Uh, Aquarius, which is a fixed sign. Uh, fixed signs tend to be what's in the middle of a season. So, you know, the middle of winter, the middle of summer, the middle of autumn, the middle of winter uh, you know and so I find this really interesting and the fixed signs fixed you know you think of something that is physical or something that's immovable represents to me the physical body the human physical body and then Gemini the mutable signs what is the quality when you think about a quality or a texture of mutability I see it as almost like it's got like a watery sort of feel to it, you know, not not necessarily that all mutable signs are water, but it's got like a, a movable or even ethereal sort of um, feel to it. And a mutable sign usually comes at the end of a season because it wraps it up and prepares us for change. So when you get a mutable sign, I see this as, as the soul, really, or the spirit, as I've written here. And the beauty of that is when you think about it, so you've got the mind, right, which imagines and creates things. Uh, it's at the start of things. It's that initiatory force. So that, you know, that's the mental plane, the body, the fixed sign, the absolutely, um, you know, almost like the material aspect of life. You've got, you know, the, the physical human body. And then in the mutable signs, you do, you find like the soul is able to move, right? It's able to learn, it's able to grow, it's able to change, it's able to evolve. And very often the big lasting changes that happen in us, you know, we feel them at a soul level, right? Uh, and then you've got here, um, actually, so I'll leave that for a moment and I will go into my trusty notes. As many of you know, I always have notes on everything. Um, that's probably me tapping into my Aquarius uh, sun sign there. So let's talk about air as an element. What are some of the qualities of air? And I've got tons of them here. Uh, air is communicative. It is changeable, it moves, it is free, it comes and goes. When you think about the air, you can't necessarily see it, but your voice travels on it. Uh, you know, it's through the medium of air that the, you know, that words, that sounds travel. Um, you can't see it, but it fills your lungs. It's there, but it's not there. It's present, but it's um, unseen, let's say. Uh, and, you know, because it represents thought, it represents the, the mind and obviously all forms of communication, it can talk about the mind. It can talk about, you know, the physical body. It can talk about the spirit as well. It's got all of those broad applications. So uh, some of the other words I've got here are, uh, air is inventive. 
It's all about generating ideas. It's all about communicating concepts, getting things across to people, uh, you know, using your words, using your, uh, or maybe even condensing your words into a picture and conveying a concept that way. Uh, quick thinking, logical, you know, the logic, the, the mental plane, the reasoning, the communication, the, um, what's the word? Uh, air is also thoughtful and detached. And when we talk about detached, uh, the air signs tend to live more in the mind. They're a lot more cerebral. They're a lot more sort of, especially, you know, when you think about Aquarians, they're quite far out there, um, you know, on to the next thing. What's the next thing? What's the, the future thing that we can bring into this world, into this reality? Uh, conceptual, I talked about that. So, uh, when I say conceptual, this is about building or designing an idea. And you know, everything that you see in front of you, the iPad that I'm filming on, the ring that I'm wearing, the board, the pen that I use to write on the board, uh, everything that we see around us originally started as a thought. Somebody saw a need or, or had a need or had a desire and they thought about it long enough. They poured enough of that mental energy into that into that thought construct in order to bring it into actuality, in order to fashion it into the real world. So air, you know, there is no more important than any other, but air is a very important element in terms of the way that your mental processes work, in terms of your ideas, in terms of being able to generate ideas. Uh, when you think about Mercury, the planet of thought, planet of uh, thoughts and processing and stuff, when it's in particular signs, um, it, you know, it's said to be in detriment. It has a tough time there because, uh, especially in the Earth signs, because Earth is slow moving, right? And air is the complete opposite. It's fast, it's free, it needs freedom, it craves freedom. It has to be free to move you know when you um, when you're in a place and the windows are shut and the air gets stale it's because there's no movement it's because there's no freedom for the air to flow uh, what else have we got? Changeable, yes. Freedom needing, absolutely. Locomotive, air is very movable, it needs to move. Social and fun. Uh, you know, when we get together with people, we don't just sit and stare at each other, do we? We talk, we communicate. And that social aspect of communication is really important to the air signs, especially to someone like a Gemini. Uh, you know, lots of people, the more people, the merrier. And the more we can talk about everything, the better. And, uh, you know, the Gemini will probably be on their phone you know sending three text messages to five different people while speaking to somebody in person uh, <laughs> you know as, a, as, a, as a, uh, a little bit of a fun example um, tempestuous absolutely the, uh, the, the air signs are, tend to be slow to anger but when they get there, they have a tendency to really go because a lot of the things that they will have observed or maybe even held onto, uh, they will really start to, you know, drive home. And it's one of these things, you know, I'm sure many of you've heard the, the phrase, don't make me read you. You never want to be read by an air sign or a water sign. The air signs, because they will give you straight up facts and they will cut you down with them. The water signs, because they will go straight in for the emotions <laughs> and there'll be no holding back. So you never Never want to be read by an air sign or a water sign. Uh, ideas and science. Um, yeah, so air signs need relative freedom. They can be t detached emotionally, often try to solve things logically. Uh, this is one of the things with the air signs. People say that they can be quite cool or quite cold. Um, and it's not so much that they don't have emotions, it's just that they process them through here. And because emotion is feeling, it's sentient, you know, it, it doesn't, um, it doesn't translate too well. They can, you know, they, they find it hard to bring those emotions out in ways that other people deem as warm or feeling, um, but they process them at a very deep rate. You know, um, as, an, as a very good example, Aquarius seems to be quite detached, um, but they feel loneliness. Trust me, they really do. Um, air needs to be able to come and go. It may, uh, and in that way, may in some people might see it as being uh, slightly promiscuous, but it's not. It's actually about the need for autonomy, autonomy, and also the need to be able to move unilaterally. Uh, the, the air doesn't travel in one direction. 
you know, uh, it's very akin to fire. It will just spread. It goes anywhere and everywhere it pleases or needs or wants to. Um, you know, air is flowing. It, it needs that freedom to be able to move. Uh, knowledge and its acquisition is important to the air signs, but it's also gained, kept and stored in different ways according to the sign, um, which is what I want to talk about. So when you talk about the air signs, um, Libra is ruled by, um, actually let's start with Gemini. Gemini is ruled by the third house. Uh, the Libra is ruled by the seventh house and Aquarius is ruled by the eleventh house. And as I've drawn the triangle there, I've put here, these signs trine each other. They are in harmonious flow because they're of the same element. They have that same sort of texture. They've got that same kind of expression, that same sort of way of, um, you know, the, or that same kind of, yeah, the same kind of expression. It's just that how they store it or utilize it will be slightly different. Uh, anything that happens in, in air signs, um, it will try in the other air signs and that's a beneficial energy it kind of it aids or assists whatever it is that is trying to take place um, and I'll talk about trines and all the rest of it later down but yeah I really thought this was worth mentioning as well and the numerological links so the number three in numerology is all about um, change it's all about communication it's all about self-expression speaking writing beauty it's all about um, you know, being who you really are, and lots of people with third house stuff are brilliant writers and all the rest of it. Um, so, you know, it's interesting that the third house then is the house of Gemini, which is all to do with communication. It's ruled by Mercury, emails, text messages, letters, um, you know, even money as well, like the, the movement of money and the, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff, which I really find fascinating. So, that's the first numerological link. The number seven, which I find really really interesting is um, the number seven is about analyzation it's about knowing yourself through the eyes of the world it's about the the self that mirrors the world it's about uh, going deep within and going deep within others and really looking at how uh, similar we are to other people but also how we are different what are our strengths what are our weaknesses and what are the things that um, make and break us in relation to the world the number seven, or, uh, that's the number seven itself, about analysation, introspection, uh, st studies, teaching, all of that stuff. The seventh house then, house of open enemies or competitors, uh, the house of the, the partner, the marriage partner, the other, the, the not self, the, the me that is out there, the mirror that I, uh, the, the mirror to myself in the world um, is found in the seventh house, right? And it's just really, really interesting when you start to look at this interplay. The number 11 is a master number. It's about the tribe, it's about the group, it's about uh, psychic ability, it's about knowing your um, under, it's about knowing and understanding your unique thread within the within the group and how that interacts with that. It's about philanthro philanthropy, it's about um, humanitarian uh, ideals. You know, just talking about the numerology of the house, you could be talking about the about Aquarius itself when you think about all of those words and what that might mean, which I think is absolutely fascinating. It's it's really amazing how um, intricate the system of astrology is, and also how intricately linked the two systems can be. You know, when you delve into them. So um, I talked about how the signs might express this energy. So they're all air signs. They're all inventive, communicative, I idealistic. Uh, they're all um, social. They're all you know fun. But they all do and gain all of these things in different ways. They express them in different ways. And what I've got here is uh, Libra will do this through schooling, through academia, through books, through tuition, through, um, you know, working with somebody in mutuality, which I think is brilliant. Um, not mutability, mutuality, yeah. <laughs> um, 
Aquarius will deal with uh, science, will deal with the fact finding, finding ideas that may be a bit disparate and kind of bringing them together, fusing them together, fusing ideas together, collecting, uh, going, you know, collecting and collating information and uh, in a scientific way, even going by consensus, you know, what is the overall trend or theme or um, uh, what's the word, trend or theme or uh, you know, what's the status quo almost? Like, and I can't think of the word for it. I'll think of it once I finish the video. It's gonna do my brain, my brain in. Uh, and then if through experimentation as well, you know, Aquarians are very scientific um, for various reasons, which I'll go into as we do the signs. Uh, and then Gemini will do this through social interaction, through travel, through fun, through play, through interaction, um, through ultimately, uh, very often a Gemini will learn through play. Um, you know, and they will play around with certain concepts and they'll bounce ideas off of people and, you know, they'll gather as much information about something and then they're on to the next, right? And they, so they've all got the qualities of air, but they express that texture in slightly different ways according to their cardinality, fixity or mutability. Um, and I think this is absolutely fascinating. And, you know, this is just one small part of astrology. Um, you know, and so therefore, I have given you the air triplicity, uh, the domain of the mind and the intellect related to all things conceptual, communicative and inventive. And that really is, you know, the, the air triplicity, as I realise I'm getting to quite a long video now. So I really hope this has helped you in some way. I hope you found it fun, informative. Um, you know, if there's anything you want to add, if there's anything that you, uh, you know, maybe want to hash out or talk about, drop me a comment in the comments section below. Um, Thank you for being here. Thank you for passing through if you are just passing through. If you haven't yet, please don't forget to like, share and hit that subscribe button. It's been my absolute pleasure and I will see you very soon for more videos. Take care.